this is what's behind fiery food. This is where it all starts, the chili pepper. And whether you like these guys fresh, roasted, ground as a powder, or in a pepper sauce, this is what makes food hot. I mean, really hot. How hot? Well, after recording three versions of that line and taking three bites out of chili peppers, this is what happened next. Oh, it's hot. Okay, that's good. What is it about a hot pepper that makes you sweat, makes your nose run, and your face turn red? What is it that can make a grown man cry? <laughs> it's very intense heat, and it'd be back of your throat. Dr. Paul Bosland knows what makes chili so hot, and he may be this country's authority on chili peppers. We can create new colors, new flavors, new shapes, um, plant height, different kinds of leaves. Um, it's just tremendous what we could do. Working at New Mexico State University, Dr. Bosland created some new varieties, like this Halloween plant with orange and black chilies. He developed a long mild pepper that you've probably eaten in salsa. And he knows so much about what makes peppers hot, he's even developed a new jalapeno and took out the heat. And I can just take a big bite of this and really have no, no reaction. He created this mild jalapeno by reducing the amount of capsaicin in his new pepper. Capsaicin is the substance that makes chilies hot. It's not the seeds like most of us think. The seeds themselves aren't actually hot. And if you cut a chili open, you'll notice right along where the seeds attach some yellow veins. These yellow veins are the ones that contain the capsaicinoids. These are the alkaloids or the compounds that cause hotness. So here's a tip. If you want to take most of the heat out of the chili, cut out the veins and you'll take out most of the capsaicin. In order to know just how hot peppers are, they're tested. The measure of heat is called Scoville heat units after pharmacologist Wilbur Scoville. Before computers, Scoville used professional tasters to establish the heat rating of hot peppers. But eventually, the people would just burn out. And so what has happened is we've turned to a machine, like the one behind me here, that actually sees the compounds, counts the molecules, and then tells us how many pungency molecules are in the sample. And the machine never gets taster's fatigue, which is very nice. <laughs> you can find chilies in all different heat levels, and they come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors red, green, yellow, or like these habaneros, the color of fire. Now, do you like hot food? I love hot food. Now, how hot can you take it? Mark Henson is the produce manager at Central Market in Austin, Texas, where he sells 40 kinds of peppers. We asked Mark to cut through the confusion about chilies. This is a banana pepper, what most people uh, really look for in a mild, sweeter uh, pepper. Next up the scale is the poblano pepper and New Mexico chilies. They come in at about 1,000 to 1,500 Scoville units. Now, what would be like the next level of the heat? The next level of heat of what we have here would actually probably be the jalapeno. This is about uh, 2,500 to 4,000 Scoville units. Uh, as you move on up, then you have a serrano pepper, Right. believe it or not, okay? And then this is too hot for most people to eat raw. Serrano, crazy hot. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then as you move on up, you have this, which is a Thai chili pepper. And what, what kind of Scoville unit are we talking about with the Thai chili? Uh, probably somewhere around uh, 50,000. And then there's the habanero, one of the hottest chilies on the planet. If you want to just right. give an idea of right. where a habanero ranks on right. the Scoville unit. Yeah, let's talk about that. Jalapeno ranks 2,500 to 4,000 on the Scoville unit. Hala habanero runs about 100,000 to 300,000 Scoville units. So this will, this will kill a man in two seconds. <laughs> can you pop one of those? No, no, no. <laughs> no normal person can pop one of these. That's just a few of the thousands of chilies grown around the world. And that doesn't include the dried chilies. I think it's kind of fascinating the way they, they like, uh, a pepper of one variety, dried and smoked, is, is completely something different. Exactly. So an ancho chili is a dry poblano. Yes. And a chipotle right, is a dried, smoked jalapeno. Some are sun-dried, some are dried by artificial means with heat. OK. Um, and then they'll add the smoke to it and smoke it for a period of probably a day to two days. Why so many different kinds of chilies to cook with? Well, as chili heads know, they all have a different taste and a different burn. Eating chilies is like drinking wine. The very first time you drink wine, the thing you notice is alcohol. But after a while, you can tell a red wine from a white wine. And chilies are the same way. After a while, you can tell what's in a salsa or a dish. Okay, we have this young green Thai chili pepper. 
Fu Suaz Di is a master at blending different chilies. She trained as a food scientist, and now she owns Satay in Austin, Texas, where she prepares Thai food, one of the hottest cuisines there is. Can, can you imagine what Thai cuisine would be like without hot oh, peppers? I I would think it's going to be pretty boring. Right. <laughs> you know, because chili, just chili pepper may give the food a little kick. Fu cooks with Thai chili peppers, those little rockets that kick out 50,000 Scoville units. She also likes to use fresh Texas jalapenos. So it depends on the levels of heat and the flavor we try to accomplish. One of her specialties is Thai basil chicken, using a special kind of herb called Thai holy basil. It's a simple stir-fry dish with big flavors. As usual, Fu starts with the chilies. So, so when you're cooking with Thai chilies, it's a good idea to add them to the oil first. To add to the oil with the garlic. With the garlic. It's the stir fry together. It gives you a very, very good aroma. aroma. Next, add the chicken and the onions and stir. Then add mushrooms, jalapenos, the sauce, and the seasonings. It smells really good. And you can really smell those chilies. At the end, stir in the red bell pepper and the basil, and it's ready. Thai holy basil chicken. Asian cuisine with a kick, as Fu would say. Christopher Columbus discovered chilies when he discovered America. He took them back to Spain and chilies spread throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia. Just about the only place they didn't catch on was here. In the United States, we think of hot food being Tex-Mex or, or Southwestern because that was the region that used it. But around the world, almost every cuisine used chilies and we are just really rediscovering it in the United States. Today, you can find more ways to heat up food than ever before. Markets carry fresh hot peppers, create new salsas, and especially these, bottle after bottle of hot sauce. For most of us, this is what we grab when we really want to spice our food up, a bottle of hot sauce. So next up, we're going to Cajun country, Louisiana, to find out how this whole hot sauce thing got started. 